Oh, hello there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Garage Band Weekly. On this week's show, we're going to be taking a look at all of the free Apple plugins that are part of iOS that you can use in Garage Band for absolutely zero dollars. We're also going to be talking about connect plugins that are part mouse. of iOS. We're going to talk about you can use Garage Band. I need to stop creating a loop zero dollars of audio. We're going to be talking about my own plugins show. That are part <laughs> mouse. I we'll turn that one down. <laughs> Welcome to the professional hour here on Studio Live today, where Pete plays back his own video in his own background. That's how we roll around here. What else have we got? We've got Saga Synth is the new uh, new app that is taking the iOS world by storm. And uh, like we are every week, we are brought to you by my Garage Band Guide. If you just go to studiolivetoday.com slash garage band, you can check out all of the stuff I have over here. I've just updated it with some new information. All the playlists of videos that you can use to get started, as well as links to all the cool GarageBand communities that I recommend, including a link to some bloke over in the UK called Patrick at the GarageBand Guide. All the questions that you could have about GarageBand are answered in one convenient place at studiolivetoday.com slash GarageBand. We'll jump into our news and notes in just a moment, but first I want to say hi. How are you? <laughs> Welcome back to 2023. It's our second show of 2023. And I hope you're doing well wherever you are in the world. If it's uh, the evening time for our friends in Europe and the UK, the afternoon in the US and uh, morning time here in Australia town. Uh, let's take it out of the folks who are here live. We've got Barry Glenn here. We've got Mark Bro. We've got Deep Gravity. Uh, we've got uh, Mr. Thomas Christ. Uh, hello from Canada, eh? <laughs> don't, don't make me start with the accents. I'll get into serious serious trouble. Uh, yes, epic echo, right? That's just me trying out the brand new, uh, the brand new looper. It's called not pausing your own show while you're doing your show. That's uh, that's the name of that plugin. I better actually find that one and uh, and stop it. The problem was, do you want to, do you want to go behind the scenes? Do you want to see uh, the the cause of my ineptitude? Uh, it is this. It is that I put all of the links for the show in my show notes in the description. Good, good thing to tell you folks here now. If you want to see all of the links to all of the things we talk about in the show today, if you jump down to the video, see here's our video playing live right now in the background. If you jump down here, here's all the links. So what I've done is I've opened all these up in my browser, the problem being uh, that I left this running. So uh, it's just a simple matter of closing down this window, which is this one here. See ya. All right, and we should be good to go. So you can go down there and uh, check out all of the links that we have down there. G'day, Tommy Johnson. Thank you for being here, my friend. Uh, thank you, Thomas. Yes, do go and check that one out. Alex Backus over there in Germany. Hope you are doing well this evening, my friend. Uh, we've got a Tremor Bear. Wouldn't be a show without you. Hello, neither. Uh, Queensland. Let's go Queensland. We've got a lot of Australians around. Uh, more Australians than we used to have. It used to be very dominated by the US and Canada with a sprinkling of UK and a bit of Asia thrown in for good measure. I don't know. There's been more Australians uh, hanging around the channel and producing great music lately, which is a good thing. G'day, Russ. I hope you are doing well, my friend, as well. Have I said hello to everybody? I think I have. If you are here and uh, you do have questions, we do have a Q&A section on this show. All you need to do is put a big Q in front of your question and we'll get to your questions later in the Q&A section of the show. Barry Glenn, I have your questions already tagged, ready to have a look at, as well as you read. Uh, so thank you for your early questions. We will get to those in a minute. Should we go through the news and notes at the four minute mark? Yes, let's do it. So CES has just wound up for another year. That's the Consumer Electronics Show over in Las Vegas. And you would have already seen in what I just showed you that there's a link there if you want to go and check out uh, The Verge did a best of CES video. You can check out all the cool tech and all the things that went on there. Like usual, I sort of talked about this last week, I think, on the show. But as per usual, it's a lot of uh, what we call vaporware. A lot of things that sound really cool and really new and really funky on the surface, and then you realize that, hey, this is probably never actually going to be a real thing. So beware of some of that. But you get to kind of get a glimpse into the tech that's going to be here in the next year or two years. Now, in terms of Apple and GarageBand and creators, wasn't a whole heap. Apple do their own events. Apple are like, no, you can have your CES. We have our worldwide developer conference and we have our special keynotes and iPhone launches. So they don't really get that involved in CES. But a lot of the peripheral manufacturers, so people making monitors that are obviously important for people using. And the one thing I got out this year was 
the new wireless charging standard. So if you were using an iPhone, if you're using any iPhone from about the iPhone 8, I believe it came in, uh, iPhone 8 onwards, it has wireless charging. So it has Qi charging. So it means that if you just place it bonk, on a wireless charger, it's going to charge through the back of the phone using an inductive charging technology. And that was called Qi Spelt QI, but pronounced Qi, and apparently that's the Chinese character for breath and wind, and I don't know what that has to do with power, but anyway, that's what it is. There's the Qi 2 standard, and as per usual, uh, the, the guy that's on the absolute front of this is uh, Mr. Rene Ritchie. So there's uh, down in the links, there is a very cool short video. It's only one minute, and it's Rene Ritchie here explaining everything about Qi 2 and what it is. And here's the relevance to Apple that uh, Apple have actually given the wireless charging consortium or whatever they're called the standard for uh, what they have, which is MagSafe. So if you've got an iPhone 12 or 13 or 14, it has MagSafe, which is that magnetic wireless charging standard. Now, previously, there was Qi and there was MagSafe and never the twine shall meet, whereas now probably in a preemptive mood to not get in trouble with the European Union. Apple have said, okay, we'll give you our standards for MagSafe. You can build that into Qi 2, which means that whether you have a Samsung, a Google Pixel, or an iPhone, or any other device, you're going to have the same wireless charging. So you're going to have the same ability to charge any of your devices, which can only be a good thing. That and uh, USB-C can only be a good thing. If, if in the iPhone 15 or the iPhone 16, we have the ability to use Qi 2 charging with any other charger, as well as the ability to have USB-C for universal connectivity with all the stuff, meaning that you can, you know, plug your iPhone and do things like I'm doing here with my iPad. This is only possible with audio and video because of USB-C. Lightning did not support the sending of audio and video. So that's a good thing. Hopefully, what I'm hoping, I'd love to see wireless charging come to other things. How cool would your iPad be with a wireless charger? Like a big dock that's just a stand. You just go clunk and you throw your iPad onto that when you're in the studio. I basically have it here with the the Magic Keyboard that I use, which is the smart keyboard that you magnetically plonk your iPad onto. But it would be cool if there were other devices that did the same sort of thing. Uh, Deep Gravity says, I have a Qi charger for my iPhone AirPods and watch that sits. Yeah, I have the exact same thing. So I have, um, I have a Qi charger which has the watch puck as well as a puck for your phone to clock on there and a little pad for your, your um, AirPods. And if you're wondering what's the difference and why is this so important that it's magnetic, if you've ever tried to, in fact, I've got one right here. If you've ever tried to get your phone to sit on one of these things, here's the thing. If you put it on like that, it'll start charging. But if you put it on like that, it'll charge, but at about 50% efficiency. And if you put it on like that, then it's going to not charge at all. And sometimes if you have this like on your bedside and you knock it in the middle of the night, suddenly your phone's not charging. Whereas magnetically, it would actually stick to that instead of just being a boring, lifeless piece of plastic that doesn't actually do anything. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, a wireless iPad charger. I think that would be kind of cool. Uh, what else do we have in the news and notes here? Uh, Apple's next event, people are already talking about March 2023 and what Apple are going to announce there. The word on the street uh, is, and it's fairly loosely at the moment, is that uh, new MacBooks are the rumors. Uh, I've, I've linked to a, a article at Tom's Guide down below if you want to check that one out. Uh, my goodness, do you want to return it? No. Uh, what's with the pop-ups? I know my website has them too, but geez, the pop-ups. Uh, so mostly, if you read through this, uh, the, the too long didn't read is that Macs are, are slated to be there. So we're still waiting on an M2 Mac Mini which is probably the next computer that I will buy. We're still waiting on M2 ultra-powered MacBook Pros, so the new versions of the MacBook Pros, not the 13-inch, but the good one. And we are still, of course, waiting on some sort of Mac Pro. So is there going to be much uh, happening uh, in the next sort of six months for most creators? Not really. Uh, we had a pretty frantic 2022. So 2023 is kind of just a little bit of chill time at the moment, just waiting to see what uh, will happen next. But it's more than likely that the M2, I don't think we're seeing M3 or anything revolutionary this year. It's going to be the continuation of the Max M2. And later in the year, of course, iPads, iPhones and all that jazz. But whew, still recovering from 2022. 
Uh, the other news is that lower end iPhones are really not selling that well. So there's been a lot of articles lately, and I've linked to one down in the in the description as well, uh, about the fact that the base models, so the the mini models, the iPhone SE and the old iPhone 13 mini, the smaller devices, are just simply not selling. No one wants a smaller phone anymore, it seems. Also, the base model iPhones are not selling that well. So people are not buying the new iPhone 14 they're buying the iPhone 14 now, 14 Pro. Now, is that because they want the dynamic island? <laughs> the dynamic island marketing has been so good that they want to go for the iPhone 14 Pro. I don't know. I doubt it. But it is interesting that um, even though, because I was, I was thinking about this this morning, even though we live in this bubble because we're creators and we want to create music in GarageBand or on our phones and on our tablets, we are kind of the exception and the mainstream of the rule. What this is kind of saying, though, is that maybe there's more people in that pro or prosumer level that actually want to use their phones for more creative endeavors. And maybe with the rise of Twitch, the rise of TikTok, the rise of YouTube, the rise of live streaming, the rise of short form content, there are going to be more people creating in the future. And people like Apple are going to be more focused on us as a market demographic. That can only be a good thing because at the moment it feels like a lot of Products are being pitched at the consumer, at someone who is consuming content, not necessarily creating content. So I think that that can only mean good things for us as creators in the future. Uh, I'm just going to move that screen. Uh, the one final piece of, uh, piece of news is, I've got a question for you. Do you think supply chain issues are actually over now? It does seem that the problems that we were having in 2020, 21, 22 are starting to wind up. And it's a, probably a combination of factors. It's a combination of China removing their zero COVID policy, which means that they're starting to reopen factories. They're not shutting down every time they get a single case. That's meaning that there's more production actually happening. The slowdown of the economy has actually helped because less people have the disposable income to buy more products. And I think those those two things combined and the fact that we're, we everyone's bought everything. Like that's the thing. So many things were released in the last sort of few years that we've kind of caught up. If there's something that you couldn't buy, you probably have been able to buy it now and therefore you no longer need to buy it. So there's the lack of demand, there's the lack of disposable income, and there's the increase in the ability for especially China to be producing and supplying more things. So it's just interesting that looking around, there's a lot of things that you couldn't get. Do you remember the, the great webcam shortage? It was ridiculous at the start of 2020 when the whole schnizzle hit the fizzle. It, we couldn't buy a webcam. You could not get yourself a Logitech 920. In fact, the evil scum of the earth were buying them all up, buying them all wherever they could get them at retail, and then reselling them on eBay for two times, three times the cost. So it was costing you $200 for a webcam. I remember I bought the very last monitor. The monitor sitting behind me over there that my wife uses for our home office, that was the very last monitor over 26 inches that you could buy on Amazon in March of 2020. Because they were just sold out. Everyone had just bought them all up. And if you went into like office works or a retail store, there was nothing on the shelves. It was uh, it was kind of ridiculous. All righty. Yeah, people want better camera for TikTok, YouTube and Facebook. Exactly. People want the ability and they want the power to be able to produce all that stuff in their phone. So I think all the people that laughed at content creators like myself five years ago who were shooting, editing and releasing um, content on their phone are now going, I want a good phone to do all of that as well. So it's interesting interesting times. <laughs> I could use a Nokia 5110 and an XP to run a uh, sonar. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, well, it's, it was the old times, the 5110. Remember the Nokia 5110? Is, is there, if you're not old enough to remember, that's the iconic. Uh, let's just Google this sucker in case. By the way, this this show uh, goes off on tangents, just so you know that. If, you, if it's your first time here and you're like, it's 13 minutes in and he hasn't done any garage banding yet, yeah, we go off on tangents. That's why it's one of my favorite shows of the week, because we just talk uh, talk crap. <laughs> so this is the uh, the famous or the infamous Nokia, let's just zoom in, the Nokia 5110. So I actually, um, my sister had the yellow one at one stage. But um, yeah, this is, this is the famous very first phone that many of us had. Uh, it was sort of supplanted by the 3210, which was the one without. So this was the one that I probably remember the most. I had exactly that one. That could be my hand holding it there for all I know. Uh, but yeah, the 3210 was uh, an amazing little phone, one of the first ones to have 
have things like Snake on there. You could actually do text messaging. It had like a big four-line monochrome display. Uh, yeah, those were the days. And um, it was the, what was the one that I had that was sort of the next level? The 60, I think it was a 6210 was the one that started actually bringing in, yeah, this one here. This is the one that started bringing in smart features. So this is the one that uh, has had a modem, had a GPRS modem to be able to get those, you know, real high speed 56K mobile internet stuff. Uh, yeah, it was pretty darn awesome. So uh, I was a big, big Nokia or Nokia or however you pronounce it in your part of the world. Uh, yeah, the 2110 was, uh, was even more old school. Yeah, exactly. And webcams are now super duper cheap and uh, really good quality. So uh, if you go right now and uh, here's, a, here's a shameless self-promotion for the Studio Live Today gear guide. But if you want to see the webcams that I use here and all the gear I use in the home studio, studiolivetoday.com slash gear. But yeah, if you come in here and you look at the, if you go down to webcams, uh, my recommended webcams that I use. Blip, 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 blip. Where are your webcams? Would help if I put this into uh, order. Cameras, cameras, there you go. So something like the Logitech uh, C922 Pro, which is the one I used to use, uh, $108. So that was a little bit more expensive. Uh, the Logitech Brio is actually pretty good value at the moment. It is, uh, yeah, 129 So look at that. I'd, I'd get that. The Brio 4K webcam. This thing was selling for about 250 just a year ago. Now you can pick it up for 129 which is ridiculous. And I think the Logitech 920, as Mark says, is only about 70 80 bucks now which is pretty, there's a, the knockoff ones, but if you come down here, yeah, look at that, 66 bucks for a Logitech 922 and a little tripod mount there. So that is great, uh, great news that uh, we benefit. Finally, we benefit, the consumers benefit from something, and it's the fact that the, the producers are back to it, and uh, I guess, yeah, people don't have money to buy things. So just when you get it, that's how supply and demand works, people, just when there's enough supply, there's no one's got any money, so there's no demand. But it'll switch around. Everything old is new again. Yeah, the monophonic ringtone. Remember when they like they kind of use things like the old Commodore 64 chip tune things to to use very fast changing things to almost make it sound like it was polyphonic, but it was very much monophonic indeed. All righty, that is our news and notes, uh, and we are going to move on to our feature topic in just a moment. Well, we had a couple of questions that have come in. If you do have any questions, we'll, we'll, we'll push the Q&A section up earlier. So uh, if you've got questions, we, we will cover some more later if we have some more time, but let's just answer the couple that came in because they came in super early just before the show. So we'll jump in and answer those. Uh, one came in from Rena. Uh, who said, please remind me what you said, the GarageBand update that won't screw up my current files. I forgot what you said on the other live stream. Thanks ahead. So I'm not sure exactly what I was saying or what it was referring to, but my number one recommendation is before updating anything, first and foremost, don't be in the middle of a major project. So make sure that you're not in the middle of something big that uh, you know, updating your iOS or updating your Mac OS may cause problems. The other thing is that make sure that your files are backed up and hopefully saved in your iCloud Drive location. So there's two places to save. There's on device and there's cloud. So for a Mac user, you'll either save on your Mac hard drive or you'll save to your iCloud Drive. And for an iPad or iPhone user, you'll save in the on my iPad or on my iPhone location or you'll save in iCloud Drive. Now here's the thing, if you've saved in iCloud Drive and it's here in this GarageBand folder, or on your Mac you've saved it out or you've copied them across to iCloud, they are safe, they are secure because they're uploaded to the cloud, they're not going anywhere. The problem is that what some folks have done in the past is they've only saved their stuff in here on my iPad, on my iPhone, or on their Mac hard drive. They then go to update to the latest operating system. Something goes wrong. They have to restore their device and they lose everything. So the number one tip is to back up, have a backup of all of your project files before you update. Now, if you don't have enough iCloud drive storage, that's okay, just zip up. Come in here and zip up all the stuff that you've got stored here and copy it over to Google Drive or Dropbox or OneDrive, like any other cloud storage, or even copy it over onto an external drive. So that's that's what I was referring to. If, if I've misread the question and it was something else you were asking, Rena, do let us know. 
uh, which version will the new plugins work on? So uh, for iOS, 16.2 is actually pretty secure and pretty good. The only thing that I use that no longer works now that I'm on iPad OS 16 from 15.7 is Final Touch, which is the mastering app that is now RIP gone forever. So yeah, the, there's no other plugins that I've heard of. I'm sure there's some. I'm sure there's some very small ones. But in terms of all the other plugins I use, like Channel Strip and LRC7, LRC5, all the other stuff, I haven't heard any reports and folks that are here this is the beauty part of we've got a, a live audience here and we've got folks on the replay go ahead and uh, and ask those questions uh, barry glenn's got uh, got a couple of questions so i i put barry onto the channel strip plugin and we probably don't have enough time to go into detail on the response to these but perhaps i'll uh, i'll do these in a future video i think i've linked you to this video barry but if i haven't i'm uh, going to throw this in the chat right now if you haven't played around with channel strip and you're looking for a way to do EQ and compression and even some gating, some noise gate, the channel strip plugin is super cool. It's like a dollar fifty, I think. It's uh, this one here. Yeah, it's a dollar forty nine. It's from Audio Damage, who are a great company, make really good stuff. It's available on iPhone and iPad, so it's going to be cross compatible on all of your projects, all your GarageBand projects across both devices. And I highly recommend it. You can check out again the video tutorial that I did on this one uh, last year, uh, two years ago, in fact. It's probably due for an update, so I'll put that on my list, Barry, to do an updated version on them. Because you got questions about here about the sequencing of the plugins and uh, uh, how does it uh, it's just a good setting for bass guitar and acoustic so yeah we'll, we'll talk about that as we go through the uh, the free Apple plugins and the other question you had is how do I permanently install them in the selection box saving me to search every time so yeah you can set up templates in GarageBand so if you want to if you want to use so say you're using bass and, and every time you create a new project you have a bass track I've, I've talked about this before but if every time that you start a new project you have the pretty similar tracks what I would actually do is actually create yourself a template and then instead of using a blank one sorry I'm going to jump over to the right screen here <laughs> create yourself uh, so you'd come in here and you'd set up all your tracks so you duplicate these out here and you call one bass one guitar one uh, microphone and then what you can do is actually save in the plugin so let's just say that you wanted to have that channel strip plugin here every time you do this well you can just come in here and go there and add in channel strip and even set it the way you'd, you'd want by default and then save this project just as template as Baz's template and then every time you create a new song you've already got a bass track with your favorite bass settings an audio tr recorder track for your vocals with your favorite settings and then you can obviously tweak them but it means instead of starting from scratch every time adding in all the plugins every time you're starting and look i'm going to note that one down as well as another video i need to do is how to create a default template in GarageBand. because then all you do is once you've got that template you come out here you save that as template and then every time you're starting a new project you don't just open the template you duplicate it and then you use that as your starting point. Uh, the other question you had there about um, that is you can actually use, there are, I'm trying to use my words here. You can actually save in uh, presets here. So if you come in here and you uh, add, oops, now I'm in a project that I shouldn't play around with because it's actually a finalized project. So let's go to, where was that one I was just creating? Uh, I didn't save because I didn't I didn't put any audio in it. But if you come in here, most plugins actually have the ability to save in presets, and this one's no exception. So if we add channel strip in here, you'll notice that I on this one already have up here in my saved saved presets. I have a vocal preset, which is my vocal preset that I use for channel strip. You can then tweak these, change it all up, and then if you've got you know, a nice one for bass that has a nice you know, low noise uh, a gate so you don't get any rumble in there, you've got some nice compression on there and you've EQ'd the, the, the lows up and the highs down, then you can come in here and you can save it and it'll actually save it as whatever you want here. So you can save another one as bass and you're good to go. So then it, it means that you don't have to come in here. And pretty much every plugin has the same thing, has the ability to save custom presets so that you can do that. So hopefully that gives you a little place to start there, Barry. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a cool plugin. If you're just looking for something simpler uh, that is cheap as cheap as anything. But again, if you want free, hang around because we're about to talk about all free plugins. Uh, Final Touch is indeed dead. It is gone. It is history. Um, and Trinity is uh, is what uh, others are recommending, Thomas and Jade, which I haven't actually tried yet. 
uh, I'll uh, I'll give that one a go uh, soon. I still I'm still still playing with grand finale too. I'm a little behind. Uh, in 2023, there are too there is officially we've hit the wall where there are too many apps for me to keep up with, and I accept that. <laughs> As you'll see in the plugin of the week, I'm not even reviewing the plugin of the week. I'm just pointing you to other reviews because what, what it's already been done. I don't need to do it. I don't need to reinvent the wheel of for everything. Alrighty, uh, let's uh, let's jump in to our. Yeah, there you go. Only 99 cents US. Yeah, it's a dollar 49 in Australia. 99 cents USD. Just grab it. Just grab it. Um, can I do that on iOS? Yes, that is an iOS. The Channel Strip app is an iOS plugin. So uh, yeah, there's uh, the 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 link. Uh, actually, what I'll do is I'll throw I'll throw a link to the App Store. It is this one here. Bop, 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 bop. This one here. So uh, I'll throw this in the live chat now. But yeah, if you just search uh, search that one, if you just search Channel Strip, it's a gate an equalizer and a compressor and it's all in one and the good news is that the the, the great news for uh, garage band users is it only uses up one of your slots and you can do your gate your compressor and your eq all in one or you can do multiple so if you want to run through two different compressors or switch the order put the compressor before the gate i don't know why you do that <laughs> but you can put the like the compressor before the eq if you want to change things up so it's a pretty cool app and uh, again uh, there's not many things that i say just buy if I was starting out today and I had $5, I would buy Audio Share and Channel Strip because that gives you everything you basically need because there's so many reverbs and delays and those sort of effect plugins. But what GarageBand does lack is a really good gate EQ and compressor. It's got its base ones that we'll show you in a moment. Um, and what, what iOS in general lacks is the ability to manage your audio files in an efficient way, and that's what Audio Share does. So if you are if you are a cheapskate like me and you're on the cheap and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, then, uh, yeah, go ahead and do that. Bazaar Homework tonight, exactly right. Yeah, have, have a play and uh, get back to me because your experience will actually help me make the next tutorial, Barry. So go away and play with it and then come back at me with your questions and then I'll create a new tutorial on Channel Strip that answers questions from a real GarageBand user actually using the plugin because that will be a lot more beneficial than John's just sitting here making schnizzle up as I go along. All right, uh, let's jump in here. I'm going to bring up a garage band project. Guess what? In case you were totally sick of my uh, my song "Grown" from last year, my song "Temper Song," we're going to use that as our demo song. Yay! There we go. Uh, so this is my song "Grown." Let's just do a quick audio check before we dive in and look at all these plugins. So it should sound a little something like this. Those exceptionally good Jade Star drums there. And the rest of the tracks there. So I've picked this song because it's got some it's got some acoustic guitars. Doesn't have anything really electric. Well, it kind of does. It has, but no, they're all acoustics. Uh, but we got some we got some organ in here, we got some bass, we got some guitar, we got some uh, some upright bass, we got some drums. So we got a bunch of stuff that we can use to play around with this. So here's the basics of the free plugins that you have here in GarageBand. If you've never explored these before, you've probably come across the first set. There are links down in the description to both of these, so you can check out my full video and review because we're going to race through them here today. But to add a plugin, you grab a track. Let's uh, let's grab this one here, this uh, acoustic guitar here, right here in the middle. Whoops, I've just lost my mouse. We'll grab this one and we'll just solo it and play around with this acoustic guitar. Let's just turn it up. Now you can hear that I've already got a bunch of effects on there, but we'll we'll fix that. We'll we'll fix it by removing those. To add effects, you tap on your effects button here. If you're on an iPhone, it might be in your little drop down. So this is something that that trips up most people. If you're playing around on your phone, there's a little drop down arrow, and under that has your track controls, your project settings. So you might find this is not right there, especially on a smaller phone. It might be under a little drop down. But once you're in here, go to your plugins and EQ, hit the edit button, and now you can add things to your heart's content. So on this one already, you can see we've got the noise gate and the compressor they're built in by default you got the visual eq but then we've got four different slots here and at the moment i'm using tone bridge and the effect eq uh, now the effect eq doesn't do a whole lot that's actually part of the preset over here it's this tone and squeeze knob so if we turn that one off it's going to turn off the ability to change that tone as soon as we turn it on it'll come back so i'm actually going to remove that because we don't actually need it but what tone bridge does is it's an amp simulator plugin 
at the moment, I'm using the Wonderwall acoustic tone on this one, which is uh, the tone I wanted for this particular track. Now, there's two different types here of free GarageBand plugins. One that you probably have already found, if you hit the plus button here, is these ones here, these 10 effects. And the video in the description goes through each one of these in detail, shows you exactly what all of them will do. The bit crusher, chorus, distortion, flanger, microphaser, overdrive, track echo, track reverb, tremolo, and vocal transformer. So they're the very standard ones. And as soon as you throw them on here, throw a flanger on there and you can play around with the flanger. You can make some really interesting and some quite terrible sounds. So they're the GarageBand plugins. Now, they're on by default and you'll always have them there. However, there's another set of plugins. If you hit the plus button here and go to audio unit extensions and scroll on down, you'll notice that we have all of these. So we have the bandpass filter, delay, distortion, dynamic processor, high pass filter, high shelf filter, pod EQ, low pass. Yeah, there's a lot of them here, including this new sound isolation one that has just been added. So there's a bunch of plugins here to play with. Now, if you come into your GarageBand, you go to audio unit extensions, you scroll to the bottom and they're not there, there's a way to enable them. I'm not going to show you here because I'm going to point you to the video. It's in the description. It's got a video and in the first two or three minutes I show you. You basically just go into your advanced settings, you select enable iOS plugins and then they'll be available. Because the thing is, these are actually not GarageBand products, pro, uh, not GarageBand plugins specifically. They're actually iOS plugins and that's why some of them are weird. Some of them, like the, the Pod EQ, is actually a throwback. This was on iPods and iPhones and iPod Touches as the actual EQ. And when we get to that one, you'll see what I mean. It's it's kind of wacky. It's 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 bizarre that it's there. But the reason it's there is that these are too, these are used. They're, they're kind of buried. A lot of other apps won't let you access them, but GarageBand will because they're AUV3. So GarageBand lets you jump in and play with them. Should we go through them? Let's, let's go through them here real quick. So the band pass filter. So if we add that one here and we tap on the little Apple icon, what this does, if this allows you to just select a zone, so we can tap in the middle there, we can move this zone around, and this means that only the audio, and it's actually a really good interface these days, only the audio within that band, that's why I call a band pass filter, will actually be filtered and be allowed in there. So to show you what this does, if we play the guitar, <laughs> With the bandpass filter down low, we're only getting those bass frequencies. Bring it into the middle, getting mid-range. Bring it to the top, you're only getting the high end. So why is this good? Well, let's just say that you, you wanted to do both a low pass and a high pass filter. You wanted to cut out all the lows and you wanted to make sure there were no squeaks and things. We could just throw the bandpass filter on the middle and then we get a very mid-rangey sound. So it's going to remove any rumble and it's also going to remove a lot of that top end air airiness. So it's actually a handy little plugin to have if you're finding that you've got, and again, if you've got too much mid-range type things and you want to remove all the bass as well, you can really sort of just bring it up to the top here and then you're going to get a very treble heavy sound. You want that kind of far away. Yeah, pretty cool. And as, uh, as Thomas said, for too long, these had a text interface. Yeah, they were all but useless until the 2022 update here because what it used to look like is this. <laughs> I mean, it's exactly the same thing because it's just the center frequency and then it's how much bandwidth. But the difference between dialing them in on here versus tapping that one and actually visually being able to see exactly what you're dialing in and where, it's, it's night and day. So yeah, it's, it's very good. It's good that GarageBand gave us the ability to actually use the graphical interface there. So bandpass filter, that's what that one does. Let's move to the next one. We'll stay on the guitar here. We'll vary the instruments as we go and uh, look at other ones as well. But we'll just stay with this guitar for now and we'll grab the next one. The problem is they're all at the very bottom here. This is delay. Now you might be thinking, we've got a delay effect. There's already a delay. There's the tape echo, there's a tape delay, but this is a different type of delay that you can use and experiment with. So what this one has and uh, you can see we've got a bunch of different options here for the delay that you can move around here i think i think they've actually updated this since i've last looked at it this this looks more in depth has anyone used this recently wow this has actually got uh, some different kind of sound ah, it's like a reverse delay what the heck <laughs> i haven't played with this in a long time so you can zoom in and out there oh so this is your seconds 
this is actually cool. Look at this. This is a visualization of when that delay is going to hit. So you can move these delay options down and you can see there that like this is so 0 0.4 seconds, 0 0.8, 0 0.1, 0.2. And you can actually like see how much it's going to actually delay. Let's, let's play this and have a listen. So you can hear that's almost like a half second delay, but then you can make it like a real quick sort of uh, echo sound delay. That's cool. You've got a low pass cutoff here that we can adjust here. You've got your dry and wet mix. Uh, oh, I don't see. I don't know what that inversion one does there. <laughs> this is we're learning here together. It looks like I need to come and play around with these again. Let's just try that and see. So this might be a stereo delay, in fact, because yeah, look, it is. That's mono delay. And this looks like it's stereo delay. <laughs> like a ping pong so there's a ping pong delay left right left right left right that's kind of cool i like that i'm gonna i'm gonna experiment more with that one because i haven't played around and i don't think it looked like that before and again you can see this is what we used to have this is what we used to have for the delay whereas now it's this and it's got so many more options it's almost the same as what you have on a mac now which is kind of cool so and, and again you can you can see that you can use a number of seconds now this isn't going to help if you want it to time with your music if you want it to be in time with your music you'll want to use the regular delay but if you just want to experiment with a few different sounds this is pretty cool so there you go the delay plugin We'll do one more on this guitar and then we'll change up the instrument just to keep things interesting here, shall we? Uh, we'll scroll on down and grab the next plugin, which is our distortion plugin. <laughs> now, what we'll actually do, we'll put this on after Tone Bridge. So remember, if you want to change the order of your plugins, you tap the edit button here, you grab on these three lines and you can actually drag things up and down. You can't put it ahead of the noise gate because that doesn't make sense. I think you can put it ahead of the compressor. Yeah, you can. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you want the distortion, say after your amp simulator, you can slot it in like that and then you're good to go. So distortion, yeah, these have all changed. Look at this. I'm sure that we didn't have all these options before. Like this is this is the old version here, and it was almost unusable. But I reckon that they've re-updated these again because this has a whole bunch more options than it used to have. This is cool. It's got the delay, the ring modulation there. Uh, it's got your your distortion here, the amount of decimation that you have, the rounding to make sure it's you know, really crunchy or a little bit smoother. Uh, and there's probably we didn't look last time, but yeah, look there are. Look at all the presets. I forgot to mention, all of these have built-in presets and like we showed before, you can save in your own custom presets. So let's cheat a little bit rather than me relearn how to use all this. Let's use some presets because this is a guitar and what do we want here? We want uh, we want a guitar multi um, mobile phone concert. Let's just see what the mobile phone concert sound is. Okay, that sounds terrible. Don't know why you want to use that. Uh, what about a distorted cubed kind of sound? Ugh. Okay, I think on acoustic guitar, this is not going to sound good, but let's go with like the multi echo one. Yeah, no, um, I think we needed to use a different instrument for this one because it's it's a little bit over the top, but uh, echo tight. Let's just see. Okay, uh, yeah, there's options in there. Um, I need to I need to redo these. I need to redo all of my tutorials on these and relearn them myself because there's a whole bunch here. Oh, you've got soft clip gain in here. You've got everything. Oh, so that's probably why it was, it was, that's why it was like clipping and having, sounding horrible because your global settings over here. Yeah, they, these are all updated. This is fabulous. Okay. So that's the things you find when you look under the hood. I like it. All right. We're going to uh, hit done on that one. Let's, uh, let's change that. We'll turn that off. Otherwise, when we come back and play the track, it's going to have it there. What shall we choose next? Well, why don't we use some vocals for a couple? So let's come down and find John's lead vocals, which should be uh, down here. They say vocals lead. That's probably the ones. So they sound like the this. The only one. I'm a grown ass man. Please take me home. All right, so let's uh, let's fiddle about with these vocals, shall we, and try the next few plugins. So we'll go to plugins and EQ. Oh, my arm's getting sore because I'm reaching out with my mouse. <laughs> we'll go to plugins and EQ. Uh, we'll take off the enhanced tuning because we don't need no we don't need no stinking tuning. And uh, we will grab an effect here, audio unit. Scroll to the. I need to remove some plugins. I use about. 10% of those plugins. So the next one we're going to look at is the Dynamics Processor. Now, let's see if this one... Okay, so this one's still 
pretty similar to what it was before. So this is like a... Compre- Actually, in fact, this one might be a good one for you to play around with, with uh, Barry, if you're looking for things, because this is a dynamic compressor uh, that creates a bit of a gate sound and can do some sort of hard or light compression here on that. So again, if we look at our plugins, our presets here, let's come in and we'll just put a hard plugin uh, preset there and take a listen. The only one I'm a grow ass man please take me home and you can actually see there it's actually got really good visualization now I've done all that I can. of what it's doing there please take me home we can add a uh, makeup gain there and you've got attack and release this is what you were asking about too Barry never had to see the lights never had an urge for starting fight pretty cool <laughs> there's, a lot of, happy on my- there's a lot of good stuff in here so, yeah, so Dynamics Processor is uh, like a gate and a compressor, similar to what I just showed with the Channel Strip plugin, but definitely worth a look if, you, uh, if you're playing around, especially with some vocals. Again, these have, all been, these have all been updated, and that's pretty darn cool. All right, next one, uh, the high. These ones should be a lot simpler. The high pass filter. Uh, yes. <laughs> so this is a very simple one. This is exactly what it sounds like. It uh, is a high pass filter, which is the same as a low cut filter. So if you've got rumbly sounds in your music, so let's just say I was recording these vocals in a, a, a studio that had a lot of background noise, a lot of rumble, some trucks driving past. What you'd want to do is set that to reduce everything below, say, about 200 hertz. So you'd set it around about here and hit play. I own. And I know I'm surely not a... So that'll just make sure that anything between 0 and 90 hertz is completely removed. Anything between 90 and 100 and 200 hertz, it basically shelves that off. So it will reduce the amount of sound there. The other thing you can do with this is as an effect. So if you grab a high-pass filter and bring it all the way up the top, you get that kind of AM radio effect. Alone, cause I just don't have a plan. Please take me home. So if you want to use it as an effect and get that, you know, overused pop punk Green Day style effect on your vocals, you can use the high pass filter for that. Let's grab our next one, shall we? Now we can actually just tap in the middle here. Oh, no, you can't. <laughs> I thought you could just tap to change it. No, we'll just have to remove it. Edit, uh, edit, and then tap it. There we go. Edit, tap it. See, it's been a while since I've used these. All right, scroll on down and we'll grab the high shelf filter. So this is a fairly similar sort of concept, except that this time around, it's actually going to create a shelf at the top. So it's like a high pass, but the exact opposite. So this time you're just using this to select what frequency you want to do it at and then removing that high end. So if you're finding you had too much kind of hiss and airiness in your vocals can here, can please take me home? You can do that and it's going to remove those. Now, if you bring it down too much, Never had to see the You're going to lose a lot of that kind of airiness, but if you just want to... Never had an urge for starting fights. So this is good if you've got like a, a hissy, like lots of s sounds, too much air, too much kind of crispiness in your vocal. You can throw a high shelf filter and that'll actually reduce down your high frequencies. So another pretty simple one there. Let's edit. Let's tap again. We'll go to the next one. There's a heap of them in here. And again, it's just... Oh, this is the wackiest one of all. So this is... This is the Pod EQ. I don't know where you would ever use this one. Um, it basically, the, remember these? Remember all of these from your iPod days? Remember, you're like, you click, 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 click. You click and you click wheel around, and you can use all of these. So that's all this is. It's the iPod EQ. So I would normally uh, put mine on rock. <laughs> <laughs> because I'd be listening to Pearl Jam and Nirvana and I'd be wanting the rock sound and uh, it just EQs it and creates like a rock sound. Grown ass man, please take me home. So it kind of just removes the highs and hypes up the bass. Would you really want to use that? Probably not. Should we move to another instrument? Let's find, uh, let's find something fun to try the next few plugins in. So uh, let's grab maybe the organ. Let's go play with our organ. Always a fun time. All right, so if we come over here to this organ sound, because you can use these plugins on virtual as well as recorded instruments, don't forget that. Yeah, so there's our organ sound as it is at the moment. It's got a little bit of delay and reverb and things on there already, but we're going to add some more. So plugins and EQ again, edit. We've got a slot. We'll come in here to audio unit extensions. 
we'll scroll down. You know the drill by now. And the next one is our low pass and low shelf filters. Now, if these sound familiar and you think they're going to do the exact opposite of what the high pass and high shelf did, you're exactly right. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on these because your low pass filter is doing the exact same thing you did before, except it's doing it by reducing the high end and leaving the low end. So if we hit play on this one. So really doesn't do a whole lot. You know why it doesn't do a whole lot? Because I'm on the wrong track. I'm like, why did that not do anything? Oh man, I was like, this is terrible. It's not actually changing any of the frequencies. How about we do it on the right track? Low pass filter. Let's try that one more time with feeling. So if we play the track. So again, you're doing the exact opposite of a high pass filter. And I wish they would call these high cut and low cut instead of high pass and low pass. Because remember, high pass is the reduction of your bass, your low end. And low pass is the reduction of your treble, your high end. Just call them cut. It would make everyone's life a whole lot easier, in my humble opinion. But who am I? I'm just a guy in the YouTube channel sitting in his front room. So uh, I am not getting paid the big bucks to make up these names. Let's go and grab the next one, which is the exact inverse relation of that one. So if we come down here and look at the low shelf filter, not surprisingly, does the same thing again, but this time we're shelving off the bottom. Again, don't really need this one because it does almost the exact same thing as a high pass filter. I'm not going to even demo that because it's kind of pointless because you already have seen that one in action as its inverse relation. Let's grab the next one, uh, which is over here. Oh, scrolling on down. What's your favorite of these? Um, I kind of like this one. This is the band EQ. So this one, wow, no bands currently active. So, oh, this is the, ah, oh, the, oh, okay. This has changed as well. <laughs> this is interesting. I've not used this one. So you have to double tap them. Ah, oh, okay. Guess what? Um, hey, LRC5 and LRC7, uh, you're probably no longer needed. So it looks like Apple have actually added a proper multiband parametric EQ into their iOS apps. So what you can do with this one is you can double tap on any of these and then you can move them to wherever you want. You've got a cue setting down here so you can adjust them if you need to do some like notch EQ to notch out a particular frequency. You can do that. Double tap on the base one. Is this going to... All right. So these are all parametric, but it looks like up the top here, you can change these. Yep, you sure can. So you can change these to say like a, uh, a high pass. So a resonant high pass filter. So look at that. You can actually change your high pass filter. So you can add that in there. You can add your entire EQ curve using this. And I'm sure that over here, you could make this instead of parametric, you could make this a shelf, high shelf. You absolutely can. Okay. Yeah, this is, this is a game changer because this is building in. Uh, unfortunately, I love LRC5 and LRC7. I love their developer. But um, this, is, this is where the good EQ is at. And this is weird because you could you could come in here and EQ your whole thing. So and you can do sweeping here to find frequencies you might want to notch out. What you want to increase. That's bizarre. Yeah, I'm with you, Jade. It's baffling because these are massive updates and I've missed them. And I use GarageBand all the time, but because these plugins have been so naff for so long, like all they did is they used to have it like this. So used to not, they used to be unusable because this used to be how you'd use them. So it was all there, but who's going to use it when it's like this? And then it looks like with the iOS 16 update, they've actually added in <laughs> all of these. So uh, they've, they've given me a lot of work to do because I'm going to need to go back and redo all of my plugin videos on all of these. But hey, it's a, it's a good thing that we're looking at them. This is why we do these sort of shows. This is why we dive deep into the GarageBand world. Uh, don't have to pinch anymore. Uh, so no, those ones, uh, the, you don't have to use the pinch motion either. That was a good thing about that one, Joe, is when you're tapping on these, it's just got the Q setting is just these little handles. So you just grab and drag. It's actually really well designed. <laughs> this thing's beautiful. This is what a parametric EQ should be. Um, and yeah, having the ability, look, look at all the different types of EQs that you've got there. So you can do, this basically means you don't need to use any of those others because you could use this for your band pass, you could use this for your shelving, for your, um, for your high pass, low pass, everything's within there. And you've even got a global gain setting here. So you could use that, uh, that gain trick to use this instead of your visual EQ to actually up and down the gain of your entire track. So go figure. And presets, uh, we have none. 
that's disappointing. Oh, man, this is where there should be a bunch of presets for, like, uh, male vocal extra blah and whatever. But no, no dice. All right, so that is cool. All right, I'm happy with that one. Should we move to a different instrument? Uh, let's go down to our bass. Let's move uh, and play around with this upright bass because this one's... The upright bass in GarageBand is actually a really cool, so cool sound. It sounds like this. We'll turn it up. Boom, 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 boom. All right, this time we're going to use the correct track. We're going to edit. We're going to add. We're going to go to audio unit extensions. Scrolling on down to the river. And what are we up to? Uh, that was the band EQ. We're the AU new pitch. So this one has always been a bit... Hey, what have they added to this? Okay, nothing really. Because uh, this one I'm pretty sure is exactly the same as it used to be. AU new pitch version 1. Yeah. So this one used to look like this. Now it looks like this. Doesn't do much different here. But you can change the uh, the pitch either... Uh, actually, this one's by the sense, isn't it? This is this nonsense one that uses sense instead of semitones, which makes it almost impossible to dial it in correctly. So all this does is... It changes the... So it changes the pitch. and But it, as far as actual proper pitch, it's kind of not useful. So I'll, I'll ignore that one. There, there you go. There's one that we don't have to review again in detail. Let's go in and add another one. Scroll on down. This might have been... Uh, I know Omni Collective Creativity is here. This might have been part of their... Um, the updates because they did mention updates to uh, they had a big update for accessibility and that could be what this is so uh yeah weird so here's their parametric eq which <laughs> you'd think it'd be the one that you'd want to use but this is just a single eq point this is what we used to have it was a single eq point and you just have to add multiple ones of these so this is why this was useless like it still does have the q setting but it's kind of harder to to adjust there so you can still notch out and use it to change, but why would you only want one? Like, this is just one band. It, I don't know why it needs to be there. I think this is probably this is probably the back-end engine of the Visual EQ. Whenever you make a change in Visual EQ, it probably grabs this and throws it on at that frequency. That's kind of the way Apple rolls. So I don't think I would ever use, I don't think I have ever used the parametric EQ, which is weird because if you were coming in here and you were looking for an EQ that's a good quality parametric EQ, wouldn't you look for, oh, I don't know, parametric EQ and not, uh, what was the one that was the cool one? Band EQ? Yeah. Makes no sense. Now, Peak Limiter. I'm excited now. Have they added more functionality to Peak Limiter? This is one that I've been using for ages. I use it for, um, I use it for mastering. And uh, it, has this changed? It has changed. I'm, I'm so happy, but I'm also terribly unhappy because uh, this is really cool. So if you are doing some you know, quick and dirty mastering in GarageBand, you used to be able to just come in here and all it had was this pre-gain. It didn't have the attack and the release. So now you've, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the case. Did it have attack? Oh no, maybe it did. No, I'm making it up. It did have attack and release, but it's just in a prettier format now. Okay, forget that. But it does have a much better visualization here by the look of it. Let's just uh, hit play on this. You've got that crunch when you do things but yeah you can see there actually how much it's limiting the top end and it gives you a little graph down the bottom here of what it's actually doing uh, can, uh yeah so omni collective creativity has asked uh can you describe the attack and release and what they mean here yeah so the short version of attack and release is the attack is how quickly that compressor or limiter kicks in when it detects that it's over the level that you've set and the release is how quickly it lets go how quickly it stops compressing or limiting afterwards so if you set a fast attack so if you set this attack down really low it means that as soon as it goes above the gain level that you've set here it's going to start compressing if you set this really slow it means it's going to let it be up there for however many milliseconds seconds you say here and the reason you do that is sometimes if it's really quickly if it's little spikes you don't want the compressor to kick in but if it's up there for a prolonged period 
then you want the compressor to kick in. Release is the same thing. It's how long it's going to hold on to that. So after the volume falls back down, how long do you want it to keep compressing or limiting before it goes back to the original state? So that's basically your, your limiter in a nutshell is you've got your gain and then you've got the attack, which is how quickly that, that um, limiting happens and your release, which is how quickly it lets go of that limiting. So hopefully that helps out. I think there's a video here on the channel. If you search Pete John's attack release, I think I do a whole thing on the A, what is it? The ADSR or the, the envelope stuff. There's stuff around. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's go to a different thing. Let's 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 use some drums, shall we? Now uh, we've got individual drums here, so uh, it's going to be a little bit different. But we'll we'll put it on a snare drum, so uh, that's probably the most relevant drum here. Um, we'll have the 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 snare drum here that uh, Jade Star has added for this track, which sounds like this. Very cool snaring. I like it. Uh, let's come in here and add an effect to this drum. So hit the plus button. Where are we up to, folks? This is a lot of effects in here. Uh, we have done the peak limiter. We've done uh, pitch. No, we haven't done pitch. We have did new pitch. Now we have pitch, which is a different plugin. So let's jump in here to pitch. This one, I oh, see that's disappointing. <laughs> oh, God. So this one, and this one has the sense again, and uh, I think as, uh, as Audible or someone pointed out there, yeah, the sense are great, and you can actually put like minus 12 cents for a semitone. Problem is, it's a slider. There's no ability to actually enter amounts. So there's no text entry field in here. Uh, what have you got here? Universal, complex, percussive. Uh, so yeah, so it kind of makes it a little bit irrelevant uh, there because you can't actually change it. Oh, and now I've got a... What am I doing here? Oh, it's wanting me to enter a name. <laughs> Something. It wanted me to save a preset there, which is a bit weird. Uh, so I'm not going to go into this in detail because I haven't looked at this. And look, there's a lot of stuff there, isn't there? Smoothness, tightness, effect bend, pitch, analysis size. This looks like it's... This looks like it's one that they didn't bother putting through the new update uh, in terms of the interface because this is all just sliders. And this is almost exactly this, which is just the, uh, the, the generic behind the scenes version, but with slightly different coloring. So I wouldn't spend a lot of time with that one. I would, uh, <laughs> I'll play with that off, uh, offline and try and work out what any of these do because, uh, yeah, it's a pitch change plugin, but it looks like it has a whole bunch of different thresholds that you can play with there. Uh, I'll let you play with that in your own time, because pitch is actually a stupid one to try <laughs> on drums. <laughs> I probably should have uh, tried that on a different one that, you know, actually has a melody. Now, Reverb 2 has been around for a while. What have they done with Reverb 2? Again, nothing. It's so random. It's so random, the ones that they've fixed up and the ones that they've left. Because this, again, the Reverb 2, the delay, they've put that m amazing new visual interface on, and yet Reverb, they've done nothing with. So Reverb, it's just Reverb. So you can change here. Your delay times. There's low frequency. You can randomise the reflections. I've never used Reverb too much. To be honest, there's so many good Reverb plugins out there. It, and even the bass Reverb that comes in GarageBand is better than Reverb too. So don't spend a lot of time playing with it unless you find a really good use for it and then more power to you. Uh, let's go to the next one. Scrolling down. We've got two to go. Sample delay. Now this one does exactly one thing and it does exactly what you think it will do. It will delay the sound by a certain amount. Now using this in isolation on one track kind of does nothing. But if you're using it uh, in a method, so I've shown a video here called uh, how to thicken your vocals. So when you're using that method, you can actually use a combination of the pitch plugin. So slightly adjusting the pitch and then slightly adjusting the delay. So you can put this out by, say, you know, 100 samples and it will slightly delay when that sound comes in. Now, just doing it on one track makes no sense. But in methods where you duplicate out a bunch of different tracks, so you've got like four vocal tracks and you want to create more of that thick wall of sound or even with guitars you could use this you can add the delay to one of those tracks leave the other one the same and it does a good job in this case with one track doesn't really do anything but if you want to learn about that just search pete john's thick <laughs> go, go pete john's thick uh, and the last one we actually showed recently is the sound isolation plugin now this one uh, is uh, it's a, a bit of an enigma because it only has one option it's to isolate the voice and it's you know, just got a wet dry knob here. Now, I originally thought that you'd put this on a whole mix 
and it would remove all uh, would remove the background sounds and leave the vocals. And it does do that. But Jade Star actually tried it on a vocal track by itself, and I've still not actually done this. So let's try this right now. Let's see, do I have a nice noisy vocal? I think the problem is my vocal is going to be too clean here. But we'll just go to a section here where I'm singing a lot. And I know I'm not the only one. Have a We've added a plug-in on there, haven't we? And please take me home. Oh, I'm not the only. Oh, I'm not the only one. Have okay, so there's a little bit of background noise in there, but not too too much. But um, let's let's play with this. So we'll hit edit. We'll tap on this one, and instead of being that plug-in, we'll go to the very last one, the sound isolation, and hit on that. And uh, we'll isolate the voice, because that's all we can do. And uh, let's just leave it at 100% wet. And actually, that's, yeah, that's 100% wet and see what it does. The only one, I'm a grown ass man. Please take me home. All right. I think you'd need a much noisier one. Jay did a, a demo, a short video where she demoed it on a noisier vocal, and it did. It removed some background fan noise. So maybe that's an option. Look, there is a plugin, and you might be saying, Pete, isn't that just Bruce Free? Yeah, it, it's a <laughs> a poor man's Bruce Free, for want of a better word. Uh, but if you if you don't have the twelve or fifteen or whatever Bruce Free costs at the moment to to spend on Bruce Free, so if you haven't used Bruce Free, this is a sort of more advanced version of that. So what Bruce Free actually does though is it samples the sound and then it adjusts the frequencies that it removes based on the sound that you say is the noise. So what you do is you sample a bit of the sound that's the noise, and then it cuts that from the actual sound. So Bruce Free is amazing, uh, but it costs. So if you don't have the, the money to spend on Bruce Free, maybe try the sound isolation plugin. It can't work. It can't, it can't hurt, <laughs> uh, unless it does, which it almost certainly will. Sorry, I think that's a Simpsons thing. That's what my wife and I say that to each other all the time. It's like, it can't hurt unless it does which it almost certainly will. So there are, again, I'm always surprised when I do these things. There are all the plugins. The highlights there for me are the new interfaces for a few of those plugins. So I think the most useful out of all these, if I had to sort of rank them, I think the new delay looks pretty amazing. If you haven't bought any of the other more expensive delays, the interface on this one is really cool. It's got a ping pong delay, which I know a lot of folks are looking for. So you can actually have it, and look, oh, you can, look, you can, see, so you can adjust the delay to be like really wide onto the left and right, or really narrow. So if we, let's just play this. Uh, and you can do it like all the way out to a second. Please take me please home. Take me please home. take me please home. Please take me please home. Please take me home. Please take me home. Please take me home. Yeah, cool. All right, so there's definitely some uh, some playing around to do. And again, unfortunately, none of this has a manual. None of this has any documentation, which is why I've only just found it. Uh, and the other one that I'm pretty excited about out of these two is probably uh, the Band EQ, because this one looks like a pretty bloody marvelous parametric EQ. So let's scroll on down here and find this one again, a U Band EQ. So this one here has a band new one. Uh, here we go. Uh, so yeah, so this one we can like double tap on those and double tap and you can actually change your settings. That's pretty cool. Uh, why, is it, why is it all the way down there this time? <laughs> That's a bit weird. Anyway, it, it worked last time. <laughs> For the, uh, what is it called? The N-band equalizer. There you go. So there's there's your GarageBand plugins uh, here in GarageBand iOS. Pretty cool. Uh, am I in the right spot? Yeah. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, worth a look. So check out the other videos. They have some older versions of that, uh, those plugins, but I'll need to go through my old video and see what's changed and do a 2023 version. So yeah, keep an eye out for that one coming soon. Uh, we'll move on to our next section in just a moment. Excuse me, uh, I had some coffee. That was a bad idea. Uh, if you do have any more questions, though, we can do some more Q&A uh, later in the show. We're going way over here, so uh, uh, alert the affiliates. We're going over time. But just put a big Q in front of your question if you do have any questions about any of this. Uh, is this stream not in stereo? It certainly should be. <laughs> Did I not set it for stereo? Uh, it's, it's set to stereo audio. Um, 
Let me just check that. We, there's one way to find out. Unless that plugin just doesn't really work with stereo properly in GarageBand. I'll, that wouldn't surprise me, actually. Uh, let's just take a look. Oh, I'm going to listen to a guitar track. And I'll... All right, let me know, folks. This is going to be the test. We're going to pan left. We're going to pan right. We're in the center. How's that? Are we stereo? I thought we were stereo. It might have just been that plug-in that wasn't actually pinging and pogging like I thought it should be. Uh, very good point here from JSTAR. These are uh, iOS plugins, so they're not GarageBand plugins. That's why I differentiated between GarageBand's built-in plugins and iOS's built-in plugins. So these ones are going to be available. Just look for that little Apple logo. They'll be available elsewhere. So if you're a Cubasis user and you don't like their EQ, you can probably try out the Band EQ here uh, and use that instead. Aurea Pro. And I think even LumaFusion, correct me if I'm wrong, LumaFusion users, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that, uh, that LumaFusion now supports AUV3 plugins, but I'm happy to be corrected uh, if that's not the case. Um, in stereo, cool. Yeah, so it might have just been that one. Might have just been that plugin that wasn't. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's not stereo. Maybe it's. Um, no, it looked like it was supposed to be stereo. We'll play around with it. Watch this space. We'll in, we'll uh, explore it a little bit more. All right, uh, let's uh, let's move on to our next section. I wanted to, so I talked before. Here's my rant of the week, uh, an hour and four minutes in. Here's my rant of the week. Um, the PlayStation 5 is now available. So for the last three years, I've been covered. I've been using my PlayStation 4. I'm not a huge gamer. I mostly play NHL games, NHL 21, 22, and now 23. And for the longest time, I could not just walk into a retail store or go to Amazon or go online and buy a PlayStation 5. And now I can. And the weird thing is, I don't know if I'm just being a stubborn contrarian, if I don't have any money, that's also true, uh, or, or if it's just exhaustion factor of waiting for these things. But now that I can get one, I kind of don't want one. And I'm trying to work out, am I doing this to punish Sony for being so bad at their management early on? Because really, all these companies, what, what happened is, and it's not just Sony, okay, it's Microsoft, it's uh, Apple, it's all these companies, they do something called just-in-time production. So it was made famous by Toyota. If you've ever done any sort of management training, you've learned about how great Toyota were because they, uh, it was originally Henry Ford, actually. Henry Ford developed this whole process where everything just comes in and it's all manufactured and it's all just in time. So you don't ha sit around with a whole bunch of stock. You get just enough supplies to make just enough stuff to just fulfill the orders that just come in. Problem with that is, is as soon as there is one kink in that supply chain, you're screwed. The whole thing falls apart. And we've seen ridiculous things like cars coming out without seat warmers because the one chip that ran the seat warming mechanism could not be made and was out of stock. So they couldn't put the seat warmers in. Like, it's, it's stupidness. So, unfortunately, the greed of the companies to reduce their production costs so much by using just-in-time manufacturing and not stockpiling any backlog of stuff meant that everything was out of stock. Now, it's all back in stock. And I don't know. Is anyone else feeling the same way? But I'm just exhausted from dealing with this. And as soon as I saw that, I'm like, oh, good. I could get a Amazon one-day shipping at retail price sent to me tomorrow, and I could get a PlayStation 5 in my hot little hands. And I've decided I don't want it. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being a contrarian for the sake of it. Possibly. Uh, hello, Jody. Thank you. Uh, fascinating stuff. I thought I worked my way around GarageBand Pre with these iOS delays look fun. Yeah, the, that, that new iOS stuff actually looks kind of fun, doesn't it? I think it's cool. Uh, nice one. All right. Uh, let's just see if we have anyone. Hen Henry Ford uh, died in 83. Died at 83 in 1947. Interesting. And probably true. I have no desire to fact check that. I'm just going to trust you. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to scroll back up here and see if there is any questions that I may have missed before we dive in and look at uh, another section. Uh, these are also available in Gra uh, GarageBand, Mac and Logic as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that you can't use them externally um, as well. So yeah, you can. Th these are all based on the GarageBand Mac plugins that have always been much better than the GarageBand iOS plugins as well. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Someone was asking about Wider before. Uh, was that Rena asking about Wider? Yeah, Wider is a great uh, plugin for for getting a wider signal for a stereo. What is it called? Stereo widening plugin. 
Hi, Jack Splash 19. Thank you for being here. What's up? What's up, my friend? Um, all right. I think we've covered... I think we've covered all the questions that have come on in there. Uh, Fat Paddockett says, I would wait. The prices are going to spike when the new VR comes out, but they drop after two years from release. Uh, so it should come more in 2024. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Because I, <laughs> Here's the thing. Because I play one game a year, uh, and I'm already halfway through playing NHL 23 for the season, um, I'm not going to bother changing this season anyway. And you know what? Is anyone else at this point with, with home theatre stuff? I don't want to change my TV, my receiver, my uh, fetch box which is like my um like live tv box uh, my playstation everything is working right now and i know you know what it's like when you change one little cog in the whole machine it all like explodes and and falls to the ground and i don't want to do it like, i've got a, my tv is a 1080p tv like it's not even 4k it's like an old panasonic 60 inch lcd i just don't want to change it because it's just too hard Exactly. Spot on, Rena. It would just make me play more video games. So yeah, it would cost me money and then also cost me money because I'd stop uh, working as much. And it looks like I'm going to have to uh, go and do new videos on all these plugins. So I think I'm going to be a busy boy for a while. Uh, all right, we've got a couple more segments to go here, folks. Uh, please keep asking questions if you have anything else you would like to ask. But the plugin or app of the week, I, uh, I'm being super duper lazy because I have not reviewed these plugins yet. Uh, the plugin that I'm going to show you, I have not reviewed. I have not even downloaded or purchased uh, yet because I don't have a need for it right now. But I cannot deny that it looks super cool. And it is, of course, the plugin that everyone is talking about, which is the Saga Synth. Yeah, the 16-bit, if you like your chip tunes, if you thought 8-bit was good, 16-bit is twice as good. So instead of actually showing you these, I'm simply going to link to the two videos that I think you should check out. One of them is from our friend Patrick at The Garage Band Guide, who says, it is glorious. So yeah. Uh, and look, it's, it's, it's going to be niche. This is the thing that I wanted to put out here. I'm not going to be negative on this because it's obviously very cool and people are loving it and it's doing really, really cool things. If you want to create that sort of music, I don't think everyone does. Uh, the nostalgia factor is amazing and I think they've done really well. They've put together a really good app. I mean, it's the audio kit, folks. What do you expect? It's going to be really good. So uh, go and check that one out. You've then, of course, got uh, the one and only Jade Starr who has put together her usual live stream effort. Effort? That sounded bad. She's she, Oh, good, good effort. No, she's done a live stream where she's looked at this in detail. So you can go and check all of that out. I love the little, the little uh, non-copyrighted Sonic-like character that's running around there. That's kind of gorgeous. So yeah, very, very cool stuff. Very very, very fun app, and if you're the sort of person that loves loves a bit of a play, loves a fiddle, and uh, yeah, liked the old 16-bit stuff, I must admit, I missed the 16-bit era with gaming. I kind of went straight from 8-bit to computers, So, but I did remember playing the Mega Drive at my friend's house, and by the way, Mega Drive is what you in America called the Sega Genesis. We called it the Sega Mega Drive. <laughs> Which is a bit weird, I know, but uh, that's the way we roll. So jump into the description, check out those two videos. If you want to learn all about it, you've got Patrick who does like a nice quick 10 minute overview. And then if you want to take a deep dive before you make a decision about whether it is for you, jump into Jade's video because she covers it in detail. And those are both down in the description. If you want to check them out, if you want to get your pew pew do -do 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 on. <laughs> The final thing I wanted to go through today is my tip of the week. Now, I had to use my own tip today to reconnect my mouse. So before before the show, I was like, oh, I've got an issue here because my mouse here, I, I use this, uh, the Logitech silent mouse as well, uh, because it is very, very quiet. That's why you don't hear me clicking around. Well, don't need to see what I'm up to today. That's why you don't see me click. You don't hear me clicking around because when I'm clicking here, I'm using this silent mouse away from the microphone, and that just makes it nice. Uh, and it wasn't connecting, so it usually is just connected via Bluetooth and on all the time. And I'm like, oh no, it hasn't connected. And Apple don't make it super simple. For all the simplicity, for all that it just works that Apple has, connecting a Bluetooth mouse is not the simplest thing in the world. So I actually had to go and watch my own video. And I'm like, why? What's with all these long videos? Hasn't anyone made like a short video just about how to connect a mouse? And then I'm just like, oh, this bloke did. <laughs> so it's always kind of funny because um, I, I had this video here. Oh, we're, still playing, uh, we're still playing Jade in the background. Hang on. I like the sounds, but 
Put your mouse in pairing mode by tapping and holding on the connect button. Now on your iPhone or iPad, tap on settings and Bluetooth. And when you see the name of your device, tap on it. Tap on the so I went through this and I basically just had to play my own video, pause it every couple of seconds, do the step, and then I got my thing connected in a couple of minutes. So I'm like, this is why people like short form content because I didn't have to wade through a 10 minute overview of here's how to connect a mouse. It's really handy when you connect a mouse. You can do all sorts of things when you connect a mouse. So it kind of opened my eyes or eye to the fact that, yeah. This is why short form content's around. The how-to stuff, the I've got a problem, I need to, I need to solve this one thing and I just want to get it done. And for me, it was, yeah, connecting my Bluetooth mouse, which should be really simple, but there's so many, there's like three different places, there's three different settings that you have to go to. You have to connect it via Bluetooth, you then have to go into assistive touch and turn that on, and then you have to go into like the mouse sensitivity and the buttons to, to actually change it up. It's not just in one spot, it's crazy. So, uh, yeah, if you want to learn things, I guess, YouTube shorts, TikTok, how do I, and then how do you do a thing? And if you can find a one minute video, it just tells you how to do it. So I'm, I'm sold on my own stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Uh, yeah, it's like that with every Bluetooth. I know, Bluetooth just, uh, don't get me started. Don't get me started. I'll be an old man yelling at clouds rant again, if you get me too started on that. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was uh, I thought that was just an interesting one that uh, people say, oh yeah, do, do you watch your own videos? And I'm like, when I get stuck, when I forget how to do something, I 100% watch my own videos. So that's an example of where I've done that. And that video is linked, by the way. If you want to connect up your own Bluetooth mouse, you can check out that video down in the description. Speaking of the description, if you want to support, this show is not sponsored. We don't have any big corporate sponsors for GarageBand Weekly. Maybe. IK Multimedia. I've still got my eye on you. Um, feel free. We'd, we'd love to have IK on board. <laughs> but we're not sponsored. We are brought to you. This is all by myself and by my GarageBand iOS guide. So if you're a GarageBand iOS user, uh, I recommend jumping over here. We've got my GarageBand Beginner's Guide. It's just $10. It always has been. It always will be. No 73% off sales around here. No launches. No course wankiness. Just 10 bucks. Five hours. Curated content. Buy it. Use it. Don't. Do your thing. Uh, you've also got all of the playlists here. So I recommend this one when you're getting started, the GarageBand iOS Essentials. This will jump you over into my essential videos for GarageBand. So 40 hand-picked videos, all of the topics that I get asked for. So when people, look, there's that compression one. Someone was asking, this is compression, simple explanation of audio compression in 12 minutes. So I think it was uh, Omni Collective. If you want to learn about attack and release and compression, how it works, what it does, what it doesn't do, that's all in there. So GarageBand guide there for all of your needs and then uh, the links to the GarageBand communities you can join the Facebook groups and the Discord server and then we've got this which is kind of handy all the different things that you can do in GarageBand so if you wanted to learn about Visual EQ for instance you come down to EQ you click on that one it takes you straight into the video of a very excited Pete with his treadmill telling you how to use the Visual EQ in GarageBand so that is the GarageBand iOS FAQ Studio Live today dot com slash garage band and i thank me for supporting myself <laughs> But no, I do thank you. I thank all of you for being here. If you would like to support me even more, you can do what Thomas has said here. Become a patron at studiolivetoday.com slash Patreon or patreon.com slash Pete Johns. A couple of ways to get there. And uh, I always appreciate all of you patrons for being awesome as per usual. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out here today. Don't forget, we've got new shows coming up. We're recording the podcast live here on the channel again this Thursday. So tune in uh, straight after Jade Star's show uh, on Thursday afternoon or evening or Friday morning. If you're here in Australia, we'll be recording episode two of the podcast. And if you've got ideas for topics, the podcast has been a lot of fun already because we're just discussing random stuff. It's a bit like this, but even more random and even more generalized. So if you've got things that you'd really like to chat about or you've got ideas, throw them my way. All the ways to get in touch with me are down in the description. You can check me out on all the social places. You can email me. Uh, I do respond to my emails. It might take about a week. I'm never a, an instant responder, but I'll always get back to you. And until next time, I want to say this one thing to you. Please, this week, be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. Keep creating, and we'll see you next time here on Garage Band Weekly. Bye!